uh, Windsor police chief comes running in and this guy had one uh, donuts too many. This guy was a heavyweight and uh, you can hear him taking his heavy steps. So he really, he told me that I was free to go and when I was picking up all my stuff there, he, you know, he tried to get me to sign and I told him not signing at all. And uh, he uh, told me, you know, aren't you that guy that, uh, that filed his claim of right? And I said, well, thanks for reminding me. I believe my C schedule is 250 bucks an hour for uh, an false imprisonment or, you know, unforceable confinement, uh, forcible confinement, you know, stuff like that. Right. And so after bickering and dangling and doodling around there, he finally disappeared in the room and he came back with a $500 personal check. So I took the $500 personal check and I went to the bank. And the, the clerk noticed that it was the Windsor Police Chief and she asked me how I did it. And I said, it's probably stuff that you won't understand. So that's how I made five hundred bucks off the, of the uh, police force. It's fantastic. For two hours of service. So and nobody would ever think of this. And they actually, they actually paid you, though. That's the, that's the part that most people don't get. You were actually paid. Yeah. And um, so after that, um, I was uh, released, uh, and um, there, there was some stuff that happened in between with the, uh, with the provost marshal, but I'm not going to be getting into that because that's a, that's a whole other can of worms, and I really don't feel like explaining it. <clears throat> sure. But, um, um, but uh, I got released, and I went home. So a few days after, I finally got something in the mail from the... Um, uh, student loan didn't go through right so I asked one of my friends that I had on my Skype and uh, I said well, you know what's wrong with this and he said okay we're supposed to do it this this and this so I uh, did it this way and he explained it why it's the way it is right because it's a private can you can you do me a favor and explain a little bit to the listeners so that they understand what the differences were that you that you had to change in order to make it go through yeah I'll, I'll explain that when I'm actually going into the remedy. Okay, right sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just, right now, I'm just, like, kind of blown through my life story. So, but okay. after I'm done my life story, I'll spend more time to actually get into the remedies. All right, then go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Um, so, yeah, so um, I sent it in, revised, and stuff like that. And within a week and a half, I got something back right away. And I noticed that there was no payments field. And I said, holy shit. So I cracked it, right, meaning opening the envelope, and I saw the adjustment for $49,000. See, when you take care of a student loan with the A through D style, what you will see is you will see a payment for the same amount of uh, whatever you owe, and you'll see an adjustment. So if you owed forty nine grand, you'll see an adjustment of negative forty nine grand. So Right. And, uh, yeah, and I know for a fact that this works because I witnessed it myself, and I did it on myself. And they did it for other people for CRA bills. <clears throat> so um, after I after I got after I got that taken care of, I was uh, what's that popping noise? There's Pardon? Pop, there was a popping noise. Like, oh, that might have that might have been my keyboard. Oh, uh, it sounds like it's a Facebook chat bot or something. Oh no, I don't hear that. See, it just happened again. I don't hear it. Okay, anyways, I'm just losing it. But, um, <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so after, the, after me spending a day just staring at my student loan in disbelief that it's actually gone and taken care of, I, I kind of went on with my own business. And um, it was about January last year. Um, I uh, decided to go uh, uh, go buy a buy a park that we have in Windsor. Ah, uh, yes. It might be the uh, the popping in the Chitango chat on the on the Freethink site. You can actually mute it. That might be what you're hearing. Yeah, I'm just looking for where's the mute button. That's what I want to know. Right underneath the chat box on the left hand side, there's a little um, speaker. Gotcha. There you go. Just a uh, quick, you're listening to freethinkradio.com. Again, this is Lifting the Veil. I'm your host, Carrie Lee, 
and we're here with Derek Hill talking all things sovereignty, which is basic. Well, basically, right now, getting your money back from the government and and having them pay you for things. But anyway, continue. Okay. So I was going by the park, and uh, <clears throat> I ran into uh, two officers, and I was hassling a guy. And the guy decided to go over, and I uh, told, asked the officers what's going on, you know. Or like, uh, are you harassing this guy? What's he uh, being interrogated for? And uh, they told me it was like none of my business, and et cetera, and so forth. You know, the traditional bullshit that they always give you to uh, tell you to leave. So I just looked at the guy and said, you know, I'm just criminal code of Canada. As a peace officer, I can act as a warden to guard and, uh, safeguard and protect your human rights. Do you, uh, are you, uh, do you consent for me to uh, act as a peace officer on your behalf to take care of this matter? The guy is just giving me like a what the fuck face. They say, sure, right? So I, uh, looked at the, I looked at the police officers. I looked at the police officers and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, you know, since I'm now a peace officer, I'm above you, so please state your business with this man. So he, uh, they told me, you know, if you don't leave, that you'll be arrested, and I said, you can't arrest a peace officer, they have sovereign immunity. As, I'm uh, sure they didn't like that too much. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, these people were probably going on a fucking power trip. <clears throat> but uh yeah, so they so they did their power trip, you know, they arrested me, they and uh they were trying they're about to process me, right? They were getting all the paperwork ready and stuff like that. And then the uh, sheriff, the same guy uh the same guy that had to deal with me last time, right? He was hitting a corner and he just caught me right before uh the wall starts and he he went up to the uh cops there and he says, You know, why is this guy doing here? And um and uh, I went blank. Oh yeah, and the uh, officers pretty much told them that you know he was obstructing justice and BS and all that shit. And the, the uh, sheriff pretty much flat out said, "I don't give a shit. Release him." So they released me. So that's how. Uh, that's pretty much uh, from there on forth. There, they just never really bothered me all that much. Okay, on that note, quickly, just for all the listeners, we're not taking calls right now. There's a chance we might have the time to take calls between 2 and 2.30. I'm running the show a little bit later than I normally do, but I'm not going to guarantee anything right now. We just want to get information out. And um, like I said, uh, around 2 o'clock, if we can take calls, we will. I just want uh, Derek to be able to explain um, his experiences at this time, so I hope everybody understands. Go ahead, Derek, continue. Mm -hmm. So... So that's when I that's when I really like uh, started taking on through all this stuff because you know despite um, despite you know uh, catching a speeding ticket dealing with police getting paid all that stuff back then that was like fucking huge news because uh, at, at that time um, people on the Think Free forums and the World Free Men Society they were trying to get any of uh, some of this shit to work right and they couldn't get any of it to work so right. for uh, just uh, just. That just the fact that I managed to get all of this stuff working kind of really set in after a bit. So after that, I decided to uh, l uh, put my attention towards financial things. So I started uh, I started uh, crafting a couple of things such as promissory notes and money orders, and uh, I was uh, trying to apply my uh, knowledge. So I pr so I printed out three uh, promise uh, sorry three money orders. And I tried to pick up a car, I tried to pick up a house, and I tried to pick up a couch from uh, Tepperman's. I got the couch, but I didn't get the car. And the reason why I didn't get the car is that when I sent it in and uh, sent in the payments and tendered it, all they had to do was send it off to the Ministry of Finance if it was properly endorsed and all that stuff. And um, they would have had their payment. But the guy uh, called me right uh, the day before I was supposed to go pick up my uh, my hybrid, he said uh, that, that they decided to not go through with that deal. So I was like, well, what the hell? You know, all you guys got to do is just send out the Ministry of Finance. It's not like you're giving me the car. You can keep the car as long as you want. You know, when you get the payment, just here, just send the, uh, just, you know, give me a call. 
I thought. Excuse me. So when I, uh, and that was on my way uh, going to see a house. So I went to go see a house, and there was this old lady and uh, her lawyer, right? And I showed the lawyer, I showed the lawyer uh, the uh, money order with the proper authority and all that thing, and all that fun bag stuff, right? So the lawyer uh, told the old lady, which I assume was her client, uh, that you know it looks legit. It looks like it's a legitimate, uh, legitimate uh, security, and. Uh, this, this is the part that pissed me off, right? Because I was tw- I was only like 22 years old, and um, she said no. She said no because I'm 22 years old, and she felt that she felt that a 22 year old guy should not own a house because I didn't work for it. So that ah. off beyond belief. So I could have I could have had a not uh, a house when I was 22 years old, but the lady didn't accept it because I was too young. Which was which was a huge piss off. <clears throat> so after uh, so after I was dealing with uh, that stuff, there uh, that my some of my relatives started getting problems. Your relatives had problems. Yeah. And, with like uh, just financial stuff. Well, my my aunt was uh, my aunt had two big problems. The CRA bill that was like 265k, and the property taxes she couldn't pay off. So either either way, <laughs> she was damned if she do, damned if she didn't. Yeah. So either uh, either way, she was kind of screwed, right? Cause yeah. If she paid, then she would have lost her house because CRA leaned everything. So. And uh, so I went up to uh, I went up to uh, my aunt, you know, still feeling a million bucks that I took care of my student loan, right? So I came in with like a grim smile, and I say, "Hey, uh, you know, Tina, I can take care of that for you if you want." And Not that, to mention a hell of a lot of confidence now, and there's nothing nothing b- better to work with, other like ra- like confidence and victory side by side. You're rocking. Yeah, I was I was like rocking. I thought I was fucking unstoppable at that time. For sure. So. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, yeah. So I took care of her. I took care of her tax bill the same way that I did with mine. And it was about uh, about three weeks after they gave her a call, right? And uh, I I forgot to I forgot to mention to her, you know, if CRA calls, don't pick up, or as soon as you find out who it is, you know, uh, just hang up, right? And uh, and uh, uh, damn, I'm having a brain fart right now. Okay, <clears throat> so it's uh, good. yeah, so they did call. Um, she just told. Uh, she just said that she was busy, right? She had other things. To do. She she can't talk. And um, and uh, they asked, you know, what time is a good time to call back? And she said never. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good for so I, I thought that was pretty blunt, and my aunt is not really that all that blunt. So, um, so uh, that's when I uh, that's when I, that's when she called me. She called me right after, and she uh, told me, you know, what happened, and what she said, and I said, next time they call, just don't pay, uh, just don't pick up, or as soon as you find out who it is, just hang up. <clears throat> so they called once more about a month after, roughly. And this is approximately. This was around March, and um, they uh, tried. To, they tried to recontract, and uh, she just pretty much hung up on the phone. And then about a month after, they she they got a state or they sent her a statement stating that the the balance was zero. So two hundred sixty five k was gone, and they sent the papers that they released all liens. And that was just by her basically not and not getting into negotiations with them and ignoring them. And well, sending the a, uh, sending an A for V on the initial uh, security. Right. Yeah. Okay. You send in an A for V, and they tried to call, just hang up, or if they tried to send you a letter saying that it's uh, not 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 as frivolous, they're but saying that uh, they're still trying to collect or whatever, they're threatening you with other things. Then mm-hmm. uh, you know that's. That's when they're trying to recontract. But if they say that 
something like this is not the security we're looking for.